Okay, I'm going to be uh, showing you my discovery for uh, increasing uh, diamagnetic levitation. Here we have some uh, extremely pure bismuth scraps. Um, I would normally be wearing a long sleeve shirt and a gas mask while doing this, but uh, I'm going to I'm going to risk it here because it is 99.99% pure bismuth. Um, by the way, all bismuth, like all lead, is depleted uranium. All bismuth comes from depleted neptunium. Uh, interesting fact is that the Department of uh, Energy only a few years ago released the fact that we talk about plutonium bombs and uh, uranium bombs, but uh, actually neptunium is also fissionable into a nuclear device. Now, the special nature you can read all about bismuth in my book, Uncovering the Missing Sea. We've already got liquid down here on the bottom. The, uh, the secret nature of uh, bismuth is that it's the uh, only a stable element. Anything above this in weight is uh, extremely radioactive and toxic and uh, just uh, will absolutely kill you or uh, it'll just murder you, basically. It is the world's, the universe's, most stable diamagnetic element. Now there's no such thing as superconductivity. Superconductivity is a misnomer. What it is is extremely low magnetic permeability. I mean I've been playing with superconductor sets my entire life. Now by the way you would never want to cook bismuth in your house like I'm doing right now, especially not wearing a gas mask. And if you dare get it wet it will splatter on you and uh, it will burn the shit out of you, um, so don't even think about doing what I'm doing right now. Over here on the left, I have the cutoff bottom of a, a soda can, and underneath that I have a 2x2x1 two by two by inch neodymium iron boron N50 gauss uh, magnet. And uh, my discovery is that I'm actually able to change the nature of diamagnetic levitation by cooling the bismuth by the way, you see the bismuth shrinking? As it turns into a liquid, it shrinks. It's fascinating. It expands as it, uh, as it cools. Uh, but unlike a lot of other stuff that expands when it heats, bismuth expands. Uh, it uh, contracts while it heats. And I'm actually skimming off the excess here of the bismuth. Um, but yeah, all bismuth is depleted neptunium. Bismuth uh, as a naturally occurring element basically doesn't exist, but this is also nature's most stable element. You can actually see the purple and blue hues of uh, the bismuth oxidation going on there. It is a very brittle element. You can have a large chunk of it and kind of snap it by dropping it on a carpeted floor like a cracker. Not pretty much, kind of. I melted a lot of bismuth. But the discovery I've got here is that I'm going to cool my bismuth over top of the neodymium iron boron and that is going to give it a special property since bismuth is so extremely diamagnetic means it hates magnetism by cooling it over a high gauss neodymium iron boron N50 gauss uh, magnetic field what happens is, hold on a second while I pour this and I'm going to pour my excess over here and let it sizzle and bake. And right now it's cooling over top of the neodymium. If there are any, I gotta stand back, if there are any air bubbles in that uh, clay between uh, the soda pop bottle bottom and the, uh, the magnet is uh, some modeling clay. If there are any air bubbles in there, they could actually expand really fast and explode and throw uh, liquid bismuth around. <laughs> You can see the multicolored nature of the pan here. You see the purple and blue hues. That's uh, the oxidized bismuth. And you can see the fork here. I think this fork is pretty much destroyed. I've used it a few times in my gloved hands here. Uh, like I said, normally you don't even think about doing this in your house like uh, I just did. And normally I wear a gas mask. I've melted a lot of bismuth. Uh, this is an important discovery, really important. I'm actually able to change by programming the, uh, the magnetodielectric nature of the bismuth as it cools. When it cools, it expands. Uh, it expanded really quickly. You probably can't see it on the current zoom that I've got. But uh, like diamagnetic levitation kits, by cooling 
No one on earth has ever seen this before. Some people have wanted me to explain this before, but I finally am. So this is the first time you've ever seen this. Um, by cooling the abysmuth over top of this, the large uh, magnetic uh, centrifugal and centripetal field, I'm able to program the bismuth. Um, I've got tons of other videos on bismuth uh, from months ago if you want to see them. Uh, including, I also created the, the video of the world's largest diamagnetic levitation kit by using uh, a few hundred pounds of bismuth. Uh, bismuth is, uh, there's some fascinating properties of bismuth, bismuth that science is only recently uncovering because it is so it's extremely diamagnetic. It has in uh, certain conductivity compounds uh, properties that are almost quasi magical, not literally magical, but just almost unbelievable to the point of, you know, that's just impossible. They're starting to understand uh, the quasi state of, uh, of bismuth. But it has to do with why bismuth is so incredibly stable as an element. Um, like I said, it's anything heavier than this. It's, it's heavier than lead, by the way. Um, lead is poisonous, obviously, if you lick your hands, if you actually consume lead like the ancient Romans did, you know, you'd get ill. But uh, they put bismuth in uh, items that you consume. Pepto-bismol. If you actually take a bottle of Pepto-bismol and boil off all the other crap, you're actually left with a, a dot about the size of two BBs in a large bottle of Pepto-bismol. Um, so, Pepto-bismo, bismo, bismuth. But uh, if you'd like to read all about the uh, magical properties of bismuth, and since it's the, el the, war the uh, universe's most diamagnetic element, the way it cools, it create creates what they call quasi-crystals. It doesn't actually mean anything. They're actually, they uh, look like uh, hypercubes. They literally look like a cube that is imploded in on itself as they cool and creating bismuth crystals. Nobody understands the reason why bismuth cools that way until I underst understood it. Uh, you know, because bismuth is so extremely diamagnetic, which means it repulses magnetism. It has extremely low magnetic permeability. But I understand why bismuth creates the crystals that it does, and I explained that in the third book, Uncovering the Mystic Secrets of Magnetism. You can download it for free on archive.org. And you can also go on eBay and type in bismuth crystals and see some of the perfect cubes. They look like uh, hypercubes. Um, I'm trying to think of the ancient uh, uh, mythology. It's, uh, it's called uh, a yeah, tesseract. A tesseract. It's uh, literally an inverse cube. It's a counterspatial cube instead of a crystal growing like a... Uh, a, uh, a quartz crystal, not a quartz crystal, which doesn't create uh, uh, cubes like that, uh, but uh, rather fluorite cubes, like an inverse uh, octahedral, except they, these are inverse cubes, so it's a hypercube. Um, anyway, the business is cooling here, you can hear it uh, crackling and cooking, but uh, science is only just now starting to uncover some of the secrets that uh, bismuth compounds are going to produce that are actually going to change the future. There are a couple of discoveries that I made that I'm not going to talk about yet, but this is the first time anybody on Earth has ever seen this discovery. I've mentioned it to a few people, but once this disc is cooled, you know, pop bottle bottoms are perfect like this because the bottom creates a perfect little hyperbolic shape uh, that I'm able to invert and I'm able to do single-sided bismuth uh, magnetic levitation off little tiny cube magnets. Let me show you the little uh, three millimeter cube magnets and I'm able to levitate. You can get a pack of these really cheap, but with my uh, discovery here, I'm actually able to take one of these little neodymium iron boron cube magnets, which sits right up here, is a big stack of them, like 20 or 30. I'm able to do single sided levitation, but diamagnetic levitation kits are extremely unstable because you got to balance them. You know, it's like uh, I've built some diamagnetic levitation kits they're tough to balance where the magnet doesn't want to shoot out one end or the other and you have to have two bismuth discs, one above and one below, and they have to be perfectly adjusted. But with uh, me programming the bismuth here by cooling it underneath an indium and iron boron and changing uh, the lattice structure of the bismuth as it cools, it creates hot spots and cold spots and it increases the diamagnetic levitation properties of the, of the solidified bismuth. And it made perfect sense. I mean, you're taking 
Uh, the universe's most diamagnetic element, what is diamagnetic, hates magnetism, extremely low magnetic permeability, and you were cooling it in its liquid state to its solid state over top of an extremely strong magnetic Gauss field. And, uh, you know, just kind of the, the idea of like, God, duh, why hasn't anybody thought of this before? It's like, I know there have to be special properties if you do this, and oh my God, yes there are. So, you're the first people in the world that are seeing this, and uh, it'll take about another 10 minutes for uh, this stuff to cool down before I actually uh, crack it open underneath the sink there, and uh, what will happen is it'll create a, a little bismuth, a, a little bismuth disc. I've cast so many different bismuth products and I'm able to heat this one up. Here's a little bismuth sphere that I cast. I've created a few of these and it's just insanely heavy. Like I said, it's uh, heavier than lead, but uh, it's perfectly safe. Uh, bismuth has a half-life of, uh, I forget what it is, like 7 billion, no, no, it's, yeah, isn't that it? I forget how many billions of years, it's in my book the billions of years the half-life of bismuth. Bismuth is super, super, super slightly radioactive, but it is so uh, low a level of radioactivity that it's basically harmless to, harmless to human beings. Um, also, if you're interested, check back on some of my other videos on uh, my prototype that I'm actually upscaling right here. I want to show you the bottom of it. Uh, I don't know how to explain this, otherwise you people think it is implausible. I talk to other people that are interested in uh, field dynamics and field theory, but if you're everybody that holds this is fascinated by it because if you actually hold it like this and drop it slowly towards the earth, you actually get uh, let's just say variable uh, gravitational uh, uh, difference spreads on uh, the device. I'm able to figure that uh, understanding the nature of dielectricity and what gravity is denotatively rather than connotatively, able to create a device that, I won't say it's anti-gravity, but it actually changes the vectors of acceleration of the property of the object that I just showed you towards the Earth, and anybody that actually holds it in their hands can feel it. And uh, it's rather fascinating. I don't care if anybody believes me on that. It's like, well, you're talking about an anti-gravity device. But all I have to do is say, if you're ever by my house and you want to swing by and hold it, you can't have it. I've got uh, two of them and a safe prototype with somebody else. But if you ever swing by my house and you want to hold it and, and, uh, and uh, you know, just see for yourself, um, you'd be shocked. <laughs> you can't take one with you. I'm not going to tell you how it works, but uh, uh, believe it or not, that's true. Um, I, I kind of hate to talk about it because it sounds so fantastical and unbelievable that uh, no one would believe it. But anyway, enough of the cooling business and I'll end this video, but uh, at least you saw it here first and I'll uh, catch you later.